Hi, good morning everyone. Colleen O'Neill here at Mediation and Beyond. Today I have the good fortune of having my friend um, and colleague, Laura Mazarak. Um, Laura's in business development, and uh, or new business development, I should say. And she's uh, stopped by today because I asked her if she would um, take a little bit of time to share with me her story um, surrounding her own divorce. And since that's what um, Mediation and Beyond YouTube channel it really is all about, is having normalcy around divorce and other people's um, experiences. I asked Laura if she would um, share a little bit of hers with all of us. So good morning, Laura. Thanks for coming. Good morning. I appreciate it. So if you could share a little bit, I know like you're divorced, obviously, and um, I know you have one daughter who's older now, but you've been divorced a while. So could you give us a little bit of your divorce um, process, your how you divorced, what, was it litigated, mediated, um, and then a little bit about, um, I'll, I'll have a lot of questions for you anyways, but a little bit about um, where you were then, where you were now, and, um, but let's start with uh, your divorce experience first. Okay, sure. So, um, so I'm probably a unique situation in that um, we did not get lawyers involved and we did not fight and argue um, because I think the key to what happened with, with us is that we, um, we literally just sat an entire evening through the night crying, laughing, and just discussing why it broke down. And I think that that created an incredible um, respect for, for both parties. And I remember, this is many years ago, I've been divorced now for 10, 11 years, and my daughter's now 20. And, um, you know, our marriage had been breaking down prior. Um, so we, we were already starting, starting to live a little bit of separate lives. Um, but when the actual divorce question came into play and that this is really what's going to happen, um, that's when we really had to say, okay, well, what now what do we do? And we were still living together and separate bedrooms at that time. And um, we just wrote a list of, you know, here's the boat, here's the timeshare, here's the house, what happens with Kristen. And, you know, we were so flexible. And there was, my ex-husband is so incredibly um, um, unconditionally loving of me still, which I'm blessed with. We're good friends. Um, makes me crazy, but um, <laughs> it allowed us to not get, um, into like fights and I think the the we were really blessed with his previous divorce and I watched some of what had happened during that we were together we were just starting to see each other unfortunately at that time and um, I would say wow what, what is all this about and they would fight and the kids would get all hurt and upset and cry and um, didn't want to come back and forth sometimes and and I think that allowed me to say, wow, I, I don't ever want that to happen. And my daughter, we did an every other day thing and it was that we didn't stick to any, we made it rigid for her because she needed structure and we wanted her to have the structure. But it was, if you, if you want to spend the weekend with dad and it's really my weekend, oh my God, all right, I want you to, you know, I want you to be with daddy and have fun and, and, um, and same thing. So there was ne really never any fighting. We just, it was respect. It was just respect. Do you think Laura, that that was because of his experience the first time around too, as well? Like hundred percent. It was doesn't sound like it was that pleasant, right? It was awful. It was awful. Okay. And I think that for sure, me seeing what his children went through um, and what he went through as well, you know, very upset all the time. And you know, sadly, his ex-wife was really angry with him and. Um, didn't let go of the angry, angry spirit that she had. And I want to hurt you and I want to hurt you. And, and even years later, it was like eight years later. I'm like, I don't know why there's still, you know, unfortunately she just really never moved on with her life. And, um, and, but it affected everybody. It affected everybody and herself too. And so, um, yeah, so there was, it was, what, it was a, a what not to do experience for me for sure. And, um, you know, so, and, and there was really never any, I mean, I became a different person. I came out. And so um, he saw the struggle and the pain that I went through coming out at 40 years old. And, 
Um, he didn't want that to be, he didn't want that to be the subject of why we're going to have problems in our divorce. You know, I, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be like, well, now you're, you're, you're gay. And, and why, you know, there was no anger about it. It was like a pure, oh my God, let me, this is what she's going through. And this is not fun for her. I'm going to not make it, I'm not going to make it worse. And um, you know that, that's interesting because I'm, I'm probably hearing just through my years of having been a therapist in the past and now all the divorce work I do, but I'm hearing everybody saying, no husband, no man is going to be fine with his wife coming in, you know, coming out. And, and, um, and he, so is he a unique individual or would you say that really everyone can respond in that way? I think that um, I have a lot of girlfriends that went through similar experiences and I would say he might have been the easiest one because everybody had issues in the beginning because it's a, it's a hit to the ego. It's a, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard for guys, right, to experience that. But I think that um, most people that I know that did go through it, they had the rough, rough rocky road, you know, no fun. But I do see really good relationships years, years later. And I don't know in each case how much time it took to get to that point. But I do know that there, there's, and it, it boils down to respect, you know, it's mm. a respect for each other and, you know, respect for your husband to find or your wife to find the right person for them and respect to let that person live, you know, a, a healthy life and, and who they really ultimately are. So I'm, you know, I'm unique in that way. But I think even if I, if I wasn't coming out, we would have divorced. It really ultimately wasn't about that. I, I mean, the marriage broke down um, and we just had, you know, we lost, you know, all the things that I found cute weren't so cute anymore, you know? <laughs> like, you can't cook? What do you mean you can't cook? <laughs> so I thought that was cute in the beginning. It's not cute, you know? What do you mean you can't fix the door? You know, um, what kind, <laughs> you know? So I think that, and I think that happens with everybody, you know? Yes, it does. Um, that honeymoon phase ends at some point, right? And people can yeah. get annoyed or, or um, our expectations of them change. Right. And I think that, you know, um, I think if we had gotten attorneys involved, we were, we were really lucky that, you know, um, my ex is a generous guy and he wasn't going to use money as the, you know, how to get back at me. Um, and we both were doing okay. We, you know, we didn't really, we weren't in a bad state at that time. And, um, but I think that if we got lawyers and, and we did have to get lawyers involved just for that child support chart thing, apparently, like, I don't even understand, but they said, you have to, you have to at least figure that out, which we didn't follow in the end. Like there was no child support alimony either way. Yeah. There are um, guidelines, child support guidelines, and you're required to fall in the, those parameters. Yeah. And I think that, you know, from, from a lot of my friends that experienced divorce, they, that went through not so nice situations, it almost seemed like in some cases the lawyers were making it worse for them. And I think if they were to have mediated, like in my case, I also had a lot of friends that I would talk to about this and that. And should I just, should I let him have this? And should I let him have that? And you know, there was some equity in the house and, and I was like, okay, you know, what should I do with all of this? So I was getting some support from friends, but I do think that, um, I think lawyers would have made a bigger mess out of it, actually. I don't know. And well, I think sometimes, not all times, certainly, but I think sometimes lawyers can, it's, you know, you, they, they question you and then you don't have the exact answer. So then you get fearful that you need them to come up with that answer. In, in reality, there are a lot of other ways to go around getting to whatever answers you need, whether it's going through other people who've had the experience like you did, um, or just seeing a mediator or, or a, you know, a financial person instead of an attorney. Right, right. Um, and so how did Chris, so how did Kristen go through um, the parenting piece? Did you have a parent, you had a parenting plan? Did you, have, was that for the structure of it in the beginning, but you kind of didn't yeah, follow it? Did you go to that parenting, you know, school, whatever it was? Oh, the class. Yeah. So long ago, I, I just remember going, what the heck is this about? Because we didn't need any instruction, you know, and, and keep in mind too, for us, we had the experience of the, of the disastrous situation with his three children. And, 
you know, um, I can Did that have a parenting plan? Your, your stepkids? Like, oh, with, was there a plan no. with that? But it was so, it, no. Well, there probably was initially, um, but, you know, anger and, and took over. And, you know, my stepson was living with me um, almost immediately. And they weren't even divorced yet, actually. And, and she's like, I don't even want this kid. He was 13 years old at the time. And I had a 13 year old living with me and I was like 27. So, um, I, and then the girls, he had two other girls and they would, they would come like every other weekend. But it was, even in that case, it was just, it was just unhealthy. It was just unhealthy. And, and you know, I remember um, I got very close to my stepson because I took it seriously. And we got married right away to let the kids know that this is a serious, you know, we're, we're committed to one another. And my, all three of my kids were in the wedding party and, um, um, but I remember an incident where I was um, standing in the and standing next to my stepson's door, and he was on the phone with his mom. And we had just gone up to the lake and had a beautiful day, and and um, we had a great time, a lot of laughing. And he couldn't tell his mother. I remember this. I'll never forget this. He couldn't tell his mom that he had a great time, and you know he was skirting around and yeah, it was all right, kind of sucked. And I'm, I'm glad, you know, we're home. And I, 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 he, I could just sense that he couldn't share his beautiful day with her because she was, was either jealous or mad or angry. And it put him in such a terrible spot. And I cried for days because I thought, Jesus, I want my, I, and that's why my, my, when we got divorced and um, we had a place in Newport, Rhode Island at the time. And um, that was, I gave that to him. And you just, you go and you take Kristen um, to Newport. And I remember thinking that she had called me and she was telling me about her great time with her dad. And I, I went back to that moment where my stepson couldn't, couldn't tell his mom that he had a wonderful time. And I kept asking her, Kristen, are you having fun with daddy? Are you having fun with daddy? And it didn't, it allowed her to just be free and just express exactly how she was feeling and she didn't have to sugarcoat it and she didn't have to feel funny. And, and it allowed her to have a great relationship with him. And, and he appreciated that of me because of what he had gone right. through, you know, and he, he, it probably went both ways, you know, where he was like, this is my kid now living her life and being happy around me. And, you know, but if, I don't know if I would have been that way to, too, if I didn't experience that moment, you know, where, um, you know, he just couldn't be himself. But, so. you know, the beauty is you were at a, at a relatively young age, yeah. be aware of what was going on, right? And so that in and of itself is amazing that you, that you had that awareness, but then to even follow through on the awareness is a whole nother thing. There's a lot of people that notice something, but don't do anything different. Yeah, so, yeah. You, you, you know, I, and so I was gonna have, I just, it was more of that, like, that gut feel, like, oh, Jesus, I can't, I can't have Kristen feel this way for a second because she adored her dad. He happened to be in her life often and, and he was committed and he was, he was a really good dad. So I wasn't gonna taint that in any way, you know, it wasn't perfect all the time for, you know, our, the circumstances and, and, you know, you know, mom, I've got to go back home and, and, get my, it's like 10 o'clock at night and I left a belt at daddy's house and it's like 10 o'clock and I'm like, are you going to drop it off or am I going to go get it? You know, that kind of stuff. Yep. It's perfect all the time, but it's, you know, the, the big things where you want your, I wanted Kristen to love her dad and I didn't want him to feel the way he felt. You know, he was a good dad all the time and she didn't want her, his ex did not want him to, um, she was going to still hurt him. But by the same token, he didn't want your daughter and probably or stepchildren to not respect and love their their mother. Right, right. For who I was, because that was that was a big challenge for me. Like, what the heck is going to happen to my kid when we go through this process and who's going to be, you know, upset about it? And who's going to who's going to ultimately hurt her? I, I didn't care for myself, but it was about her. And I think that, you know. Well, hurting you, I'm just, just, I mean to interrupt, but hurting you is hurting her. Just okay. like hurting, hurting uh, him hurts yeah. her, his kids. Yeah, exactly. So when you hurt your spouse, your ex-spouse, soon-to-be ex-spouse or whatever, you hurt the children ultimately. Right, because it's, 
you know, it's at the end of the day, even when parents aren't perfect, their kids, that's my mom or that's my dad. And what they can't, that's it. That's it. Like they can't, it's a, it's a, such a conflict to be angry with your parent, even if they might not be doing perfect things because it's all, you know, is, is your parent. Right. So I, I don't know. Oh, there goes the dog. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. No. So, so are, are they still close today? Is ever, is it still working, you know, 10 years later? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, it switched a little bit because I, um, my daughter changed high schools. So the town that she grew up in, she went from Norwalk to Westport and she gained a lot of friends in, the, in Westport. So she probably doesn't spend as much time at his house anymore, but she's with him every single day. She oh, really? To be with him every single day. But now her primary residence has more come to here to Westport with me. And of course, once they drive, it gets so much easier. They can, you want to go, go, right? Yeah, it's, it's different. Um, it's definitely, you know, but she's 20. And, and but I think that she, um, I think our culture as a, as, a, as a split family has always been, you know, you stay tight with both. And we also did the whole, like, I never, like, just here's a, for example. So um, even at 20, she's still a pain in the ass at times. And she was really upset with me. I didn't cook a dinner the other night. And, um, and I was like off on a business meeting and I texted my ex-husband and I said, um, uh, your daughter, <laughs> <laughs> um, she's upset that I didn't cook her dinner. And she wound up going to his house and they had dinner together and whatnot. And then she wound up apologizing to me. Um, because we never let a, res a disrespect happen to either parent. You know, we might not have always agreed with it at times, but we, if, if I caught wind that she was being disrespectful to him or vice versa, we made sure that you get on it. You get on it quick because we wanted Kristen to always think that we're communicating and you're not going to get anything past either one of us. Like you can't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're not going to pit each parent against the other parent and create a conflict. And, no. and have sides. Yeah, and, and, and it, this just happened like, a, like literally three days ago. And, and <laughs> he's like, I'm on it. And then he, he talked to her and he said, you know, mom can't always cook your dinner at 20, you know, whatever he said, I don't even know what he said. Well, the nice thing is you're still co-parenting even after she turns 18. I mean, it's still going on. You still have her best interests yeah. at heart and still teaching her and modeling for her. And I think what a beautiful thing you've really modeled and created in your family for her. Yeah. And, and, and at, at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, it's about respect, you know, it's like, you can't disrespect your mom and you can't be upset with her. You can't disrespect daddy if he's not doing something right. And it teaches, it teaches Kristen to, she's always self-checking herself. She's always thinking about this and, you know, we planted those really good seeds early, but sometimes you still have to be reminded. And as we all do. Yeah. And so, she, you know, it, it works. It just well, you know, the, you know, Laura, the, I think the one thing I would take away, especially uh, there's a lot I would take away from this, actually, but a lot of good stuff. But I think the one thing that stands out to me is it never really mattered why you got divorced. It was like, here's the problem. Let's just take care of it. And let's create a space where we're both having a good life and moving forward. So why you got divorced, whether, you know, because people get stuck on he or she cheated or, I mean, you know, sans domestic violence and things like that. Right. But, you know, or, you know, he lied or he's doing this or he's watching porn or she's doing that. Like you didn't get stuck in you know, you're coming out or, or even why even before that the marriage kind of started to, you know, fall apart and you kind of started to live your own lives. Like you guys just never got hung up in that. Right. So if you take the kids aside, would you say that the reason you never got hung up on that was clearly because you wanted to both have like peace moving forward and, or, and going back to the respect that you talk about? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know what would have happened had we not had Kristen. We still, well, we still would have been divorced because we weren't meant for each other. And, um, and I think that's actually what, that was really more what I was thinking of is that, and even in some relationships past that, it was, we weren't really ultimately meant to be together mm -hmm. because, we, because of this reason or that reason. And, and I think that, um, 
I don't know, I think that allows you to find the right person then for you. And you know what I mean? Like I just, I don't know if that was answering the question or not, but I think for, for us, we, we just wanted us to be each with the right person that fits us properly in the end. And so many people, you know, they get married because they, they, they do fall in love. I mean, it's not that we didn't fall in love or anything, but then we started to learn things about each other that just weren't, weren't right. You know, I would like to go out and party. He didn't. Um, I, you know, I'm what, whatever the reasons are, you know, I'm working 24 seven and he wanted to cut back or whatever, whatever, everything you can't cook. I, you know, I can't cook either. So now we got a real problem on our hands. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that that's one thing that I know my friends that I've been close to have gone to divorce. I think that one problem that happens is, is people don't look at it like that, you know, because you don't really want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you anybody, anyway. And if you start really breaking down um, the reasons why it always takes two people, in my opinion, Absolutely. when, when a breakup happens, and one is usually still can't get past the angry part. Like he could have been angry with me. I lost money for us. Um, I changed completely who I was. I potentially put our kid at harm's way in terms of like kids bullying her. I mean, he could have really been really angry with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think at the end of the day, it was just, you are meant to be with somebody different than me. And he, and, and he was definitely meant to be with somebody other than me. I'm like, no, I'm crazy and stuff. So, um, <laughs> You know, I think that's that's what gave everything some peace. You know, yeah, and don't get stuck in the reasons why. Get if you're going to get stuck in anything, it would be on. Let's move each other forward. Yeah, right, right. So, okay, I forgot the question, but no, no, that's okay. No, no, you're totally to, no. But it, it's exactly what you're saying. It really is. It's like you didn't get. You just got stuck in wanting something better for each other. Yeah, and yeah. I wouldn't say stuck in that, but you went to that space instead of where I find most people go, which is why it ended and what happened and who's, you know, and who do we assign blame to? Who gets more blame? And right. really in the end doesn't matter. It's like what you're saying. In the end, it was like, regardless of who get, who gets more blame or why the reasons, let's just talk about how we can help each other move forward. Right. Right. So, um, having a successful, uh, you know, my kid is really healthy and happy and, um, she's, doesn't get caught up in people's drama she she's she's a good kid and and she's striving for um great things for herself and she's not on any she's not on any like antidepressants and anti-anxieties or anything and she's um you know we can be in the same place you know together there's no fighting there's no um you know it's just you know it's it makes her be at more peace you and your ex can be in the same space with her and no arguing or uneasiness no, well, I mean, I don't want it to be forever. Like neither one of us wants us, we're not going to go out and have dinner, the three of us or anything. And yeah. we've ne never done that because I've always been in a new relationship and it's just not, it just doesn't, it's just weird. So, <laughs> but um, I think that um, that definitely gives Kristen that she just doesn't have to feel torn. Yes. You know, feel, the loyalty. Yeah. The loyalty thing. She just doesn't, you know, feel it. So and if you were going to give uh, parents um, going forward or someone thinking about divorce or in a custody issue or something, I mean, again, sans that there's no domestic violence going on, right? Without anything along those, what would you tell people? Men or women, like what would you tell them if they're thinking about divorce or in the middle of something that's kind of contentious? What would you say yeah. advice wise? Well, I would say take that full night and just cry it out and laugh it out and talk it out. I mean, we literally through the night. I mean, when we were really at that point where this is what has to happen, we spent hours talking about, was that really good for you? Did you really like that? And breaking down all of, you know, specific things so that at the end it was like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I want this divorce too. You know? <laughs> and, and, um, <laughs> you weren't so great for me either. And, and it was just talking, just, just talk about stuff because nine times out of 10, really, even pe my friends, I know that still wanted to be with somebody that left them. I think they were just hang, hung up on certain things. They didn't really talk about what ultimately wasn't right for them either. You know, so I would say just, just, um, you know, 
if you can and laugh about it too. There was a lot of things that were kind of funny in the end and stupid and, and the laughter of, of, all right, this is, this is what we're going to do. And, and this is how we're going to handle it. And in our case, we talked about what we didn't want to do because we had the experience of the other kid, you know, his kids. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was, it was just really what's going to be um, good for, for both parties. And then obviously for the, for, we just have the one. So it's a lot easier when you just have one, but I would just say, talk it out, hash it out and don't get, you know, the, I'm supposed to, I, I don't remember the whole night of conversation, but I'm sure there was some anger and I was a lot of hurt. You know, there's a lot of hurt involved. And, um, but we just, you know, I remember it was like a, a, a almost a cleansing, you know, like a, like a, total cleansing and, and being honest about true feelings about some things. And, and, um, I think it helped a lot. I don't know if everybody can get to that point, but, um, it definitely helped us. It, it, well, I think it's a great foundation for sure, because it, once you air all, all of it, you know, and you both are heard from each other, like you both get to speak and you both get to listen. Yeah. yeah. That makes for a well, solid that, foundation. Right. It was the speaking and the listening that really made a big difference too. It was, it wasn't just one person over talking on the other one. It was like, you got to hear this. You, each of us had to hear what the other one had to say. And we might not have always agreed with it for sure, but, um, it was, it, it, it was a, it, it was a respectful night of laughing and crying and, and getting it all out. Yeah. And you know, perception's reality, right? So it doesn't, you know, when you're talking to somebody, even if it's a girlfriend, you're not, you're, Trying to tell somebody that's not how it was is not never works <laughs> because your perception is what you experienced. Right. And um, but just listening and hearing it without arguing, I think, makes for a completely different conversation. Yeah. Well, uh, put yourself in the other person's shoes sometimes too. Yes. Both were able to do that, and I know he did that for me because he was seeing that I was really upset and scared really scared like what the heck is going to happen to our kid and i think that he was able to put himself in my shoes and 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 take a you know a few steps back and not be so angry with me for what was happening and all that and like oh jesus she this is she's got a little bit of a rough road because when i came out it wasn't you know puppies and kittens it was it wasn't it wasn't um like it was 25 30 years ago but it was still hard at that time it wasn't as open as it is today 17 years ago so um you know, he looked at my, he, he put himself in my shoes. So if people could do that, um, I think that would be beneficial too. So it's great advice. I actually. Myself in his shoes too, knowing that I'm not going to be to you who you need in your life. And I, I want you to be with somebody that can give you what I, I definitely cannot. So, um, so I guess it did go both ways. Yeah. And ultimately in the end, it, um, it work it works out for the main person who you're both have in common, which is your daughter. Yeah. And it's nice to hear that she's landed really well. Yeah. And I think that, you know, um, even maybe talking to some kids that have had successful um, co-parenting after divorce would be really helpful for parents to hear that are going through it. Because then you can hear from, I mean, she may say something completely different. I don't, you know, but that might be something interesting too, is to actually hear from like a Kristen, for example, like what, how was this good for you? What, what, what did your mom and dad do that made it easy for you or hard? You know, and I think when people hear from the kids. Yeah. What works, what doesn't work really hits home. Cause you, cause like I said, when I was watching what my stepkids were going through, um, that hit home. I, I remember everything that happened when I was going through my divorce that I did not want to have happen to my kids. So, um, you know, and I, I didn't just hear it from the kids. I saw it. I watched it. It was not, it was not good. So, um, yeah, you're, you're watching what somebody else's impact is, right? When you're in that kind of really negative space and you can't move. Right. I was like the outsider. So it was, easier for me to not be as I was emotional because I was upset about it but it wasn't still my children and um you know it, it allowed me to do the what not ever to do not in every case but in, in a good portion of it was a bad divorce bad well I'm glad that you were aware that you didn't follow through on that and that um you know the Christians of the world uh when they bump into somebody who's 
going through that or, you know, as she gets older and her friends divorce or whatever, that I think obviously she's going to have a lot to offer. Yeah, I hope so. Insight and good stuff. She will. So, yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you sharing and being so honest and forthright. I hope the people that watch this um, kind of pause and, and reflect on, you know, how they could do it so that the end result is, you know, we're here for our kids. And in the end, it really don't get stuck in kind of um, what went wrong, but let, get stuck, you know, get get in a zone of what can be right. And um, so thanks for your for your pearls of wisdom and just for being open enough to even share and being honest. I really appreciate it. Anything for you. You know it. <laughs> All right, lady. All right. Thank you so much. Um, anybody, um, if you listen to this, please feel free to leave comments um, as you listen to it. You can find this on our Mediation and Beyond YouTube channel. And, um, and we're signing out. Laura, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon.